It's curry night at a pub in Crowhurst, where on the bar there is a complimentary copy for people to read of Secrets of the Norman Invasion by Nick Austin. I can't remember which side of the country I heard about this, and I'm pretty sure I was in the West Country when I heard about this a year ago or so. Um, and now I'm finally finally got the book in hand and can I make my own little judgment um, in the half hour before vegetable curry and wine for six pounds fifty um, with naan comes along. So um, yeah, will I make a judgment that this has credibility or not? And what what does my judgment matter anyhow? Anyhow, it's fun to have a free book of some interesting local relevance available in a pub. May more pubs do this. I'll read you the blurb on the back. Just let's just get that out of the way. First they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, then you win, said Mahatma Gandhi. Secrets of the Norman Invasion is the essential reading for anyone interested in English history and in how historians can get it wrong. Railing against an academic establishment which has for too long accepted the received wisdom of taught history, this book seeks to document the events of 24 years of research by one man determined to prove history should not be written by the victor, nor the church. Written in an accessible, non-academic style, Secrets of the Norman Invasion represents the first time that detailed analysis of the Doomsday Book has been applied to hard geographical data. Thank you. Written in an accessible, non-academic style, Secrets of the Norman Invasion represents the first time that detailed analysis of the Doomsday Book has been applied to hard geographical data. It is an analysis that proves beyond all reasonable doubt that the Battle of Hastings could not have been fought at the traditional battle site, nor could the Normans have landed or camped at the town of Pevensey. And then quotes from Dr. Marjorie Chibnall, Clare College, Cambridge University. There is enough evidence from this examination of the record of the Doomsday Book to indicate writing was to indicate Wilting was probably the base camp of William the Conqueror. Okay, Wilting is a new uh, location to me. And from Dr. E. C. E. M. C. Van Hout's Newnham College, Cambridge University. I particularly like Nick Austin's work on the Doomsday Book and the archaeological and geographical studies which he initiated. So crediting him for this type of research rather than for his actual findings. And The Guardian just said, A really good read. Okay. I'm interested in how much effort was taken to find a well-known reputable pub- publisher. It is published in Crowhurst, and I suspect that the author lives in Crowhurst. Um, I don't know why, because I suspect the it's been pointed out to me that he may well be a landowner in this area with a vested interest in owning, in being able to prove that he owns the land on which the Battle of Hastings took place. Um, but that's just the speculation. I haven't found anything in here to that effect yet. Five in the middle, the Battle Abbey battlefield story is revealed as having been built around a fraud perpetrated by the monks of Battle Abbey. The evidence published in in this book confirms that there is no contradiction in any of those documents. Once the correct sites, both of the invasion and the battle itself, are known. The place where the Battle of Hastings was really fought must be protected, and this book publishes the first pictures of the correct site There can only be one site for the Battle of Hastings. The historical evidence in this book shows exactly where that was. Wow, this was written, this introduction was written nine days after the Hastings Pier fire, i.e. 14th of October 2010. Cheers. I wonder if it's French wine. I didn't check. This book solves that mystery by providing answers that can only be explained by the application of common sense. 
much is made of a verse called the Karma, written in 1067, in which the relationship between the landing places of the craft and the sea is argued by the author of this book to be crucial. So, the words are, But after a rosy dawn brighten the lands, and sun cast beams over the world, you, William, gave command to set course and make sail, ordering that the vessels should weigh anchor. When you reach safe landing places, leaving the sea astern, the third hour of day was rising over the earth. <coughs> So, no mention of a bay, and three hours after dawn, i.e. 9 a.m., the fleet has not landed, yet somehow it has left the sea behind. I'm very pleased with this section on Bulverhithe, because Bulverhithe will be a destination for the rickshaw service that I'm going to be running, the um, Action for Hastings Happiness Pay It Forward rickshaw. And as I get to Bulverhive, Hive, I can explain um, the meaning of the word, the landing place of the people, and um, therefore that it is linked to the Norman invasion. So um, that just adds a little bit of spice to a... Um, tour to the Amsterdam um, SS Amsterdam whatever it's called um, the shipwreck from the 17th century um, yeah that's a point of tour for the free range Buddhist pay it forward pedicab which is another title for the action for Hastings happiness pay it forward rickshaw haven't decided on which name yet but I'm getting more grounded in a version of local history. And even any version of local history is an engagement. It's been a long while since I picked up a history book and got engrossed, so, um, and let alone one to do with my locality. So I think that this is of value, even if the historian I'm going to see on a train in half an hour's time or so is going to condemn it as not proper history at all. Well, it gets me interested in history, so I think that makes it valid within the area of history, but not necessarily historically true. But then, who holds the definition of historically true? <coughs> Page 175. This book solves that mystery by providing answers that can only be explained by the application of common sense.